This is the first video for Module 1 going through the lecture guide. At the beginning of the lecture guide, again, you'll notice vocabulary notation and big ideas. You'll then see that it's followed by uh, some definitions of the big vocabulary and notation uh, for this module. Instead of reading through those, we're going to jump straight to example one, and we're going to hit on each of those vocabulary items as we go through example one. This video will go through parts A, B, C, D, E to identify the meaning of the vocab words. And the next video will get actually into the simulator and creating a chance model and making a conclusion. So in this example, it says, suppose I want to understand if my die is fair. So I have some dice, a fair-sided, six-sided die in my hand. If my die is fair, then that means that it would roll the number five a sixth of the time in the long run. Notice one-sixth is the number 0.167 if you divide it out. That is 16.7% of the time it would roll a five in the long run. Notice there's nothing special about the number five. We're just, for simplicity, focusing in on rolling the die and just focusing in on, you know, what proportion of the time does it roll a five. There's nothing special about the five. Just picked a number and let's go with that one. So I'm going to collect a sample by rolling my die 60 times. Why am I doing that? I would do that because I can't possibly roll the die over and over and over and over forever to see what percentage of the time it rolls a five. I have to take what's called a sample. I have to roll it some set number of times and use that sample to try to understand what the die does in the long run. So it turns out when I roll my die 60 times, it rolls the number five a total of 14 times. So in my sample, I got 14 fives out of 60 total rolls. So that means it rolled the number five 23.3% of the time in the long run. So part A, the first question asks us to describe the variable and asked if that is categorical or quantitative. So this is a review question. So we are observing 60 rolls of the die, and the variable then would be what we write down about each roll. So what we're interested in here is whether it rolls a 5 or doesn't roll a 5. That's the variable. Does it roll a 5 or does it not roll a 5? Because in the end, we want to count what proportion of times it rolls a 5. And that, of course, then would be categorical. Now, I understand that we are counting how many times it rolls a five, which is numbers, and we're also focusing in on the number five. But ultimately, these are categories. We're saying, does it fall into the category roll a five, or does it fall into the category not roll a five? So this is categorical. Second, it asks us to describe the population. In this case, the population is all of the rolls of this die forever and ever, ever. If in the long run, I could just roll it over and over and over and over and observe the number that it rolls, that would be the population, all rolls of the die. Now, obviously, we can't roll the die forever and ever and ever and observe how many times or what proportion of times it rolls a five. So instead, we take a sample from that population. And in this case, it says that we rolled the die 60 times. Part D asks us to describe the parameter of interest. So this is a new vocabulary word, parameter, and it's a very important word for the rest of the semester. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up to the first page and, and see this vocabulary word outlined. Here it is, parameter. So a parameter is a numerical value that states something about the entire population. It's generally unknown because we generally can't gather information from every single element of the population. So please note, a parameter is a number. It's a numerical value. And a parameter is talking about the entire population. So like all rolls of the die, a number related to all rolls of the die, or a number related to all people in the country, or a number related to all students on campus. A parameter is a number related to the entire population. And again, it's generally unknown because usually you can't talk to or observe every single element of the population. So I'm going to go down here and just make note. There are actually two parameters we are going to focus in on for the huge majority of this class, and I'm highlighting them here in yellow. The first one is pi. That's the Greek symbol pi. So it's not the number 3.14. That 
that's a different kind of pi. We're just using the symbol pi, but I don't actually mean the ratio of a circumference to the diameter of a circle here. I'm talking about just the Greek symbol pi is the symbol we use, and it represents the long run proportion of times that we see a success. Or we could say it's the proportion of success in the entire population. So that is exactly what we were talking about in this die rolling problem. The parameter, the symbol for the parameter in this die rolling problem is pi. It's the long run proportion of times that we roll a five because rolling a five would be considered success. It is the proportion of times we roll a five if we roll the die over and over and over and over and over forever. So that's the entire population. So it's a proportion, it's a percentage of times that we see this happening, the fraction of times we see this happening. That is the pi value. This is value that we're trying to understand. And again, it's unknown because we can't roll that die forever and ever and ever, but whatever that number is, it's pi. Now note, we're not going to do it in this example, but there's another parameter we're going to focus on a lot in this course, and that's mu. So this is the Greek symbol mu. It looks like a little u, but it has a kind of longer tail on the left side there. Mu represents the mean of an entire population. It's a value that we're trying to understand, and it's unknown. And again, it's pronounced mu. We'll do that in a future example, just see the future video. For now, let's focus on our understanding of pi in this example. So back to our die rolling problem down here, it said describe the parameter of interest. Again, it's the proportion of times that it rolls a five in the long run, meaning if we could roll it over and over and over forever, the proportion of times we'd get a five, the fraction of times we'd get a five, the percentage of times we'd get a five. The parameter is that percentage. The parameter is that fraction. The parameter is that proportion. It is unknown because we can't possibly roll the die forever and ever and ever. So we don't know the fraction of times it would actually roll a five if you rolled it forever. Next, it asks us to identify the statistic. So that's also a very important word. We're going to use a statistic to help us understand the value of the parameter. So statistic. So let's go back up here again. A statistic is a numerical value that states something about an observed sample. This is a known value that we get from our sample. And then we can then use that statistic to help us understand and make conclusions about the unknown value of the parameter. So again, a statistic is a number related to your observed sample. We know it, we observed it. It's gonna help us though, try to understand about the larger population. There are two statistics we're gonna focus on in this class. One of them is p hat. P hat, notice how that looks. It looks like a little P with a little hat on top of it. P hat is the known proportion of success that we observed in our sample. And again, it's pronounced P hat. So this is the one that we're actually focused on in this example. Um, in our example with the die, we observed um, our die was rolled 60 times and we observed it roll a five. Uh, 14 times out of 60. So the known proportion of times that we saw it roll a five in our sample was 14 out of 60. So p hat is 14 out of 60. The other statistic we will focus on for a huge chunk of this class is x bar. x bar is another statistic. It is the observed mean from our sample. That's if we're dealing with quantitative data. And we'll come back to that one in a future example. So coming down here to our problem again, it says identify the statistic. So the statistic again is p hat equals 14 out of 60, 23.3%. We observe that in our sample, it's a known value. So the statistic is the thing we know, we observed it from our sample. The parameter is the number that we're trying to figure out about the larger population, but generally we don't know the parameter because we can't possibly get it because the population is so big. 